Oh yeah, I'm sure we've been here before. Almost 100%. And I know we got each one of the terminals, but maybe... There's a chance we just missed the holotape. So I guess we'll have to hope that that's somewhere upstairs. Yeah, Kate, those were just the dogs. And I'm sorry, but they're dead now. Okay, so where, oh where, could this hollow tape be? Oh, did we ever check this room out last time? I guess not. Check this out. Message to Buster Conley. Nice piece you did on the monorail construction project. Heaven's Highway, Devil's Doing, huh, cute. Yes, yes. So that was it then, wasn't it? Sure sounds like it. Okay, so now we should be good to go back to the, uh, the HQ, right? Or maybe not. Seems like something else might be back there still. Yeah, I'm willing to bet it's probably just like one enemy. Somewhere outside. In fact, is that him right there? Something's ghosting us. You know what? We have a critical saved up. Might as well use it. And just as I suspected, that was the last one. So finally, now we can head back to the HQ. So I will see you guys once we get there. Doc Carrington's been asking for you. Doc Carrington? Oh, that was that one guy we spoke to, yeah, not too long ago. Ah, good, you're here. There's been a development. A raider gang has captured one of our agents, codenamed Blackbird. The twist is, we thought he was already killed at Augusta safe house. Desdemona clings to the far-fetched hope that A, Blackbird is alive, and B, he can tell us what happened to the synths held at Augusta when it fell. So she wants you to tackle this fool's errand. Really? A fool's errand? Is that what we're calling it? Is it really a fool's errand? If you chain too many assumptions together, you rarely get what you bargain for. I doubt we'll find more than a body. The dead drop has the full briefing. Raiders aren't known for keeping their captives alive. But, since you're risking your neck, good luck. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy if that guy really is alive. Because supposedly he was back at Augusta, which is that one place that was completely wiped out. I think all that was left there were the raiders and then that death claw down in the bottom. Damn it. Losing Augusta is a real blow. Not your fault, I know. I cleared out some Gen 1s for Randolph safe house. Randolph is still operational? <sighs> Finally, some good news. We thought they were another casualty of the switchboard disaster, but Randolph's been dark for too long. It'll be controversial, but we have to put them under quarantine. Are you sure a quarantine's really necessary? Is a quarantine really necessary? It's possible the safe house has been replaced by institute infiltrators. It's happened before. No, the smart move, the only move, is to keep them isolated until we know for certain. Our only communication with Randolph is going to be by dead drop. Check in periodically with Drummer Boy. He coordinates the dead drops for us. Thanks. Okay, sounds fair enough for now, but hopefully... We can get them back on their feet soon. But you know, I was thinking, instead of, I guess, carrying on with these guys, at least for now, maybe we should get back to the main story? Plus, I think if we do that, we should be able to hook back up with Valentine, which will not only allow us to continue our search for Eddie Winter, but we should be able to get one step closer to finding our son as well. 
And I think that was somewhere in Diamond City, wasn't it? Because don't we need to go talk to Piper? Yeah, so I'll see you guys once we're there. Alright guys, and here we are. Back in Diamond City. You know one thing we still haven't done here is talk to the mayor. Seems like we haven't seen him for a long time. Well, well. Nikki Valentine walks into my office for a change. What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So, you two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? What's the story? Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure where to begin. Where do you want me to start? The part where Kellogg turned out to be working for the Institute? Or the part where he told me they have Sean? The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there, but to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Kellogg, really? Well, wait a second. You guys know he's dead, right? Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to go quietly the moment I saw him. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parents. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. Well, what else was I supposed to do? He wasn't going to talk. Even if I had a way of bringing him in alive. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari. The mind behind the memories. Yeah, Valentine, that's not actually a bad idea. And I know we just kind of filled Kellogg's body full of lead, but if you guys remember, we were able to get that piece of his brain. I hope you're right, Nick. Let's see. I guess we're going to need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Lucky for you guys, I've had it this whole time. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. If you want to head there together, just say so. Yeah, you know what, Nick? That would be nice. It's you and me, Nick. Let's get going. And I guess we can send Kate back to Sanctuary. But I'm sure we'll see her again soon. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. While you two are out, I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be here if you need me. All right, Piper, you take care. Even good people do crazy things when they're scared. Ought to be Diamond City's motto. Ain't that the truth? Be off murdering a pint. But anyways, let's get back to good neighbor. Oh, hey there, Hancock. Long time no see. But yeah, if you guys recall, we have been in this place before. This it was a long time ago, but we had we come in peace, what most people would call a nightmare. 
Well, well, Mr. Valentine. I thought you had forgotten about the Loney. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Okay, well, downstairs it is. Dr. Amari? Yes? Wait, I remember you. The memory inducement. Vault 111, right? What's this all about? You know what, Nick? This one's all yours. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Doctor, please. This may be our last chance. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this. And so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? As a matter of fact, I do. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Okay. Go on. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. Well, Nick, if you're ready, then so am I. We should try plugging you into a toaster next. Mmm, fresh toast. Uh, it's nice to know that even when I'm about to have a foreign object shoved into my noggin, you find new horrible ways to laugh at my expense. Oh, come on, Valentine. I'm just trying to brighten the mood. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Oh, man. Is there any way to break that lock? Tell me you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, guys. Let's do this. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and... Keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Yeah, good luck, Nick. We may need it. Oh man, guys, I have mixed feelings about this, but let's hope in the end it pays off. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. 